Um, to, we're going to talk about Midah Bavel, specifically about the Pasuk, which says that, um, Vayomer Hava, this is Perkei Dal Pasuk Dal, Vayomer Hava, and even Elon Uir, let us build ourselves a city, the Umidal Varosh of Hashemayim, and a, uh, uh, the, a, a tower who said is in Shemaim, the Nasalan shame and make for ourselves a name. Pen of photo up in arts, lest we become scattered over the, the face of the earth. So the, the most difficult phrase in that pasuk is the Nasalan shame. What does it mean going to make for ourselves our name? A name. So Rashi here on Chumash doesn't say anything. Right? If you have um, uh, the Hamor, we cross Kudolos, and you have a most of Rashi at the bottom who brings down from Rashi on Shas. That uh, it means that uh, ain't shame. No, it's from sorry, Rashi from Eov. Ain't shame ha Amar Khan el avodas kochavi. Shnei Amar v'shem Elohim achirim lo taskiu. So the, this name mentioned this pasuk according to the uh, Rashi is the name of an avodasar. I guess they were going to emblaze on in neon lights on top of the tower of Babel this name of this avodasar, which everybody was going to worship. The Svarno has a slightly different shot. He says, Nasa Shem Shatia Bamigdo, we're going to make a name which is going to be the uh, in the tower, Noshi. And it's going to go out throughout the human race. Shame, the name of Gova Mikoma the Godel Ira. So it's not that it's going to be a sign, but this this tower is going to be a sign in its greatness, in its in its height, and in the power of the city to which it's attached. Bovin techo shape, elohe alohim etokobne adam. In a manner in which it's going to be considered the God of Gods by all people. You know, if you think of it a moment, the term skyscraper actually has a similar connotation, right? It scrapes the sky, right? It's something which is almost divine. So this was going to be a focal point. Uh, this was, everybody's going to focus on it, but Kavona Bazet, Haisa, and the intent with this was Shamolech also here that whoever's the king of that city, Yimocha Kol Hamina Noshi. Is going to be the king of all of humanity. Bios Sham Drishas Kulin, because everybody's going to be focused on that tower. And the idea, of course, was at this point in time, according to Chazal and according to Sparno as well, for Nimrod to take uh, control over the world through the focus on this tower. But I, I, I would like to offer a different interpretation uh, of my own on this of Nasa shame. And uh, in order to understand this shame, we have to understand. Our davening, because our davening in many places invokes Hakadosh Baruch Hu's name, and invokes it in a way which is kind of strange. In, 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 for example, in the first, starting with benching, right? And the first uh, first bracha benching, which since we were taught, those of us taught as little kids have not given it much thought since then. But it says ba we we shmo hagadol. Everybody remember it says the first bracha and benching that we don't even know where to put the comma. In that sentence, or is it Because a comma in either place, and that where do you put the comma? So, and but besides that, what is Bavur Shmo Hagadol? He gives us food because of his great name, because of his name. Maybe because he's great. What does it mean that God gives us food because of his great name? Also, in, 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 uh, in Daphne, in the bracha, Hatov Shimcha Ulchana Elodos. Do we stop to think about that? What do you mean, Hatov Shimcha Ulchana Elodos? Does it mean your, your name is good? Your name is Hatov, and it's good to thank you? Or your name is good, your name is good as an adjective, and, and it's also good to thank you? What is the emphasis on Hashem? Why could we just say Hatov Luchan uh, Elodos? Uh, uh, what is Hatov Shimcha? What's what's the point of mentioning Hashem Hashem? And of course, the probably the greatest uh, question is in Berachas Torah. They say we should all be Kulanu Yom Diodei Shemecha Velom Dei Sora Secha Lishma. We should all know God's name and learn Torah Lishma. <laughs> Why do we have to know God's name? What's the point? When we learn Torah Lishma, what does Yodei Shemecha have to do with anything? And what is important to knowing the name? And of course I know the name. I say it whenever I'm davening. So what is the, all this emphasis, and these are just three samples. This emphasis on shame is a very, very strong one and requires a lot of analysis. 
So we don't have that much time, obviously. But in the brief amount of time which we have, so the, a, a name in Torah doesn't mean a description, it means a relationship. And it's, it's defy, it, the name shame is related to the word shom, in that it puts something in its place. But it's in its place, it defines, in our case, the relationship which we have with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now, this is different than the name which we give to objects in this world. Anything the name which you give an object in the world is a, a description of the object. But we know when we talk about Kodesh Baruch, we can't describe a Kodesh Baruch. So therefore, when we talk about Kodesh Baruch, we're not talking about a description of him, but a description of our relationship with him. And God's names are descriptions of our relationships with him. And therefore, and we're going to talk about Bavush Mohagado. One of the great, one of the names of Hashem, Yud K Vav K, is a name which sustains everything. Was, is, will be, and sustains everything. And this great name, and this is the great relationship which we enjoy, and we thank our Kurdish world for and bench it. And this, and when we talk about Yod Eshmecha, it's not that we want to know what the name is, we want to know the relationship. We want to be, and there truth is that there are many names because there are many relationships to which Kodesh Baruch Hu relates to us. We all know that the Shem Hashem, Yud Kei Vav Kei, is supposed to represent Midasa Rachamim, the attributes of, of uh, uh, mercy. And uh, the name Elohim is supposed to re- represent the Mida of Din, of judgment. Besides that, Yud Kei Vav Kei represents mar- supernatural. Elohim represents nature. And, but there are all sorts of other names. Some of them are descriptions, are descriptions which we can apply also to human beings, like Rachum, Chanun, Shalom, etc., etc. But all these names are forms of relationship. And in order to learn Torah Lishma, we have to have a relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We must have a relationship with Hashem. So therefore we need to be Yodei Shmecha before Rolom Dei Sora Secha Lishma. There has to be a relationship, and we have to know that relationship, and then we can focus on learning for the sake of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, for the sake of the divine purpose. The same thing is true about uh, Adamin. I told Shimcha, Chana, El, Odos, the relationship with you is so important to us, and we're grateful to have that relationship, which we define by shame. Now, what were they trying to do here in Migdal Babel? Nasa, one who shame. So we know the whole parish of Migdal Babel is very strange, because Migdal Babel, the Hashem, I'm paraphrasing here obviously a bit, but Hashem says, you know what? We better go down and change their language because otherwise they'll be able to do whatever they want. Right? So we have to split them up. So the obvious question is, you're God. You, you could do whatever you want. Bring a lightning bolt, right? Bring, bring, bring another flood. They could fire this time. There can't be water. Do whatever. But what do we have to mix up their languages for? So you don't have to do that. So the answer is that God made certain rules. In the, when he made the creation. And he, he committed himself to keep those rules. And one of the rules he created is that when people are unified, their power is tremendous, incredible. And that means that we have the Chazal, famous Chazal, it says that in the generation of King David, even though they are very righteous, they would go to the war and there would be casualties. And in the generation of Achav, even though they are very not righteous, they would go to war and there would be no casualties. Why? Because at the time of David, they were not united. At the time of Achav, they were united. And unity has tremendous power to protect and preserve and to give strength. And here, by Migdal Bavel, they knew that. They knew that if they're unified, they can, so to speak, make certain... I, I, I don't know, it's, it's hard to say, but they can make, they can impose their will on a Kurdish Baruch If we have this one focal point, we're going to be the shame. We're going to be, though, we're, by, we will have the relationship with which we're going to relate, we're going to have the dictates of Kurdish Baruch Instead of has, we wanting to know Hashem's name, so to speak, Hashem's going to know our name. And then we're going to be able to impose on the system whatever we want to impose on the system. And the only way HaKadosh Baruch Hu, since they're unified, the only way HaKadosh so to speak, again, according to the rules HaKadosh Baruch Hu made for himself when he made the creation, the only way Hashem can fight this 
is by dispersing the unity. If the unity is still intact, he cannot, uh, uh, he, uh, God, he, those are the rules he made. If there's unity, HaKadosh Baruch Hu can, is not going to come in and destroy them. Only if there's disunity can HaKadosh Baruch Hu then say, okay, now things are no longer, you don't, no longer have that power anymore. So I think that that could be the shot here when it says Nasa Wanushi. In other words, yes, like as far as it says, it's a focal point. And yet it doesn't, not necessarily neon sign saying Nimrod or saying Baal or saying about a Zara on it. But rather, we will now have this, just like a shame has power, and by the way, as you know, the Kabbalim use Shemos of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in different ways to bring about es- esoteric, mystical, magical results, which is beyond our uh, uh, capacity to do or even necessarily understand. But uh, the, uh, the concept of shame here is we're going to make for ourselves this unity and make ourselves into the divinity in the sense that, yes, we recognize as a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Yes, there was a model just a few hundred years ago. But nevertheless, we know how to work against that. We know how to make sure that we're going to be able to affect our will in this world. So, uh, obviously, uh, that was not, not the type of unity which was which Shem uh, the, uh, it was and that was why the unity could be undermined. The unity which is the Shem Shemayim, but Kodesh Baruch Hu never undermined, of course. But that unity was not the shame shamayim, it was for, I, I, I just noticed by saying myself, the shame shamayim, right? It's not for the name of heaven. So therefore, it was a Akash Baruch who came and did disrupt it. So uh, Tamara says in a certain place about the, the, uh, uh, the um, I forget his name, uh, uh, Chizkyo's enemy uh, in, inside of Shemayim. I'm forgetting his name, but Shavna. Shavna had a great following. And the, the says there that Shavna's following was not, Hashem said, don't worry about them. Even though they, it looks like there's a tremendous amount of people and they're all unified, Kesha Rishoyim ain't no minyan. If you have a group of Rishoyim, they're not really unified, right? Because each has their own agenda. And therefore, despite the fact that they seem to be with Achtus, they didn't have that Achtus and therefore they didn't have that power. But we, Mir Hashem, our unity should always be L'Shem Shemaim. Our Achtus should be L'Shem Shemaim. Are, we should try and not create our own shame, but relate to the shame of Sabbath Baruch Hu in davening, in learning, and in all the aspects in which we live our lives. Bechol drachecha da ehu, in all the ways in which we go. And that way, we'll be zaycha someday to the unity which will bring about Biyas Mashiach Tzikenu, Bimhevi Amenu Amen. I was told vision. Okay, I was told vision 9.30, so have a good night. Have a good night and good Shabbos. Sorry? Questions? Yeah. Um, so, first of all, yes, Carl, that was very, very enjoyable, very insightful. Um, so, so the question then is, if Hashem wanted to uh, disband the unity amongst them, um, he chose language, which I always found interesting. And I guess you could say it was into different languages, like my seven-year-old understands it, or you could say that it was the same language, maybe, but maybe they just understated, they weren't communicating effectively with one another. Is that, could that be an understanding? I'm, I'm trying to understand why if Hashem wanted to disband their unity, he did it through words. It's both. It's probably both, but it says, Achas So the two things here. One language and one mean of, mode of communication. Because otherwise one of those phrases is redundant. So it's not evidently even if you don't have a common language, there's some way of communicating properly. Right. And even if you, don't, even if you not have, can't communicate properly, you somehow have a, a language. And both of those things had to be disrupted. So, but it, I, by the way, I just thought of that now. It's an excellent question. It just came, popped in my head. Yes. Sure. I'm going to say that this was a very apt talk um, because it was very insightful, but also Donna's smiling. I think she knows why. Because the, the, the theme of this year's Sons of Israel uh, dinner is unity. So, okay.
Okay. Thanks for launching that. I think the invitations just went out this week, so I don't Very know good. if it was real or something. I had no idea. <laughs> Promise. <laughs> okay. Okay, take care, everybody. Have a good Thank Shabbos. You so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Right, thank you.